talent. Mm. You can make a case, talent for talent, skill position. You look at, you mentioned uh, Gordon and Jarvis Landry and Corey Coleman and mm-hmm. Joku at the at the skill position, yeah. wide receivers, tight end. And then you go Nick Chubb, you go Duke Johnson, and you go Carlos, uh, Carlos Hyde. So you can make a case. Does that one, you're like, man, I kind of really need to be out there throwing to them guys. And I really, Tyrod, Ty nothing against you, bro, but I, I really need to be out there. Obviously, you would want to throw to those guys. <laughs> so any chance I can get to get in uh, reps and, you know, routes on air, anything like that, throw those guys. But it's not just those those guys, too. We also have a lot of guys in the waiting. Uh, we drafted Antonio Callaway, very talented receiver. You got Higgins. Um, you got Ricardo Lewis. I mean, you got another tight end, Seth the Valve, that uh, really I think he's going to have a great year. Uh, we got we got some weapons now that mm-hmm. – uh, uh, we're gonna we're gonna be able to use. Mm. And you're going up against a defense that has some young talent. Obviously, Denzel Absolutely. Ward's in your draft class, but Jabril Peppers is back there. And last year's over number one mm-hmm. overall draft mm-hmm. pick, Miles Garrett. Yeah, he's still there. Jay, uh, mm-hmm. Jamie Collins. Mm-hmm. Jamie Collins. So, how good could the Cleveland Browns be? I think that we set our own expectations, mm-hmm. and we can be as good as we want to. I think the talent is definitely there. Um, now it's about buying into. Coach Williams on defense and Coach Haley on offense and just being able to execute. So, you know, we've had guys kind of set, you know, uh, Kirksey, one of our linebackers, said that he guaranteed us going to the playoffs. Uh, I'm not going to set anything like that because then you get a lot of uh, fire back from that. <laughs> but I, I, we have a – it's going to be, let's just say, a lot better than it has been the past couple seasons in Cleveland. And that's something that we need to look forward to and, uh, you know, be proud of. Your your offensive coordinator, he's been a lot of places, and he has he's kind of a little rough. He's kind of tough to deal with. He butted head with Big Ben. He's butted head he's with a Parcells with, guy. Yeah. So uh, how how is it? I'm because I'm pretty sure he's a lot different than what you're used to. In some ways, um, but he's much more behind the scenes, easier to talk to than what people see. So. Uh, I've had that before. All right, when I got to OU, I had Coach Heupel, who's now at Central Florida, mm-hmm. over for Frost. Uh, he's very similar to that. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Coach Heupel won a national championship. Yeah, for the, the last time OU yeah. won one. Mm-hmm. So, to me, Todd Haley has a little bit of Baker in him. I mean, he's got a little chip on his shoulder. Like, did you have you clashed at all that way? He, no. He'll tell you exactly what he. He has no filter, which is great. You know exactly what he's thinking at all times, which is the way I like it. Um, Mm -hmm. But that's, you know, we haven't clashed heads at all because we have the same goal, make that offense the best one in the country. So uh, that's that's the plan. But normally with with quarterbacks, they're coached differently than any other position. So do, do you mind being coached hard? No, I love being coached hard. You know, I think... The expectations need to be set high, and if you know I fall below that, then I'm going to be a lot harder on myself than they can. So whether they start out coaching you, oh, you have to do this and that, uh, I'll change my ways and I'll make sure that it, it is. We're all agreeing on that. Mm. So for me, I've always been the hardest on myself. Mm. Baker, Skip brought up the chip on, on your shoulder potentially, right? So, yes, you walked on to a college team and took somebody's job. That's awesome. But since then, you've won a Heisman Trophy. And you went number one out of all the people in the NFL draft. So I'm wondering, as you walk into the NFL now, do you still see yourself as an underdog? Absolutely. I haven't done anything in the NFL yet. It's the same way I've always carried myself. I hadn't done anything when I got to Texas Tech, and I hadn't done anything when I got to OU. I always have to prove myself uh, to me, not just not to everybody else. I'm not worried about getting approval, Mm -hmm. but being the best version of myself. This has been a dream of mine for a long time. and I've set the bar high always, and it's not going to stop now. Do you see yourself kind of playing your career like with a Brady-esque six-round draft pick type of chip on your shoulder? The mentality that he has, I think, is second to none. But I think that's also the same way that some of the other guys around the league carry themselves as well. Mm-hmm. Um, no, they weren't necessarily drafted in the same spot he was, 199th, but they have the same mentality, and there's a reason they've all played like that. Mm-hmm. Well, we look you, you do know 199, so yeah. you... <laughs> I was 192 myself. Yeah. There we go. 192. You did well 192 but it was 12 rounds back then. Oh, okay. So it's only seven now. So. Well, you so, still got a chip a on your different. shoulder. I and do. you're still an underdog. Baker no, Mayfield. no, no. I'll be winning. <laughs> Thank you so much, Baker Mayfield, for being with us. Thank New you. series, Thank all the way up, you. premieres on July 29th on Fox. Thank you for joining us, Baker. Stay Thank with you. us more on Undisputed.